Hello and good morning, algebra students. Um, today we're going to be covering the unit three activity, I believe. Yes, it's the unit three activity. Um, one variable linear equations. Um, the unit activity linear relationships. So that's what we're going to be covering today. And um, if you need any help afterwards, feel free to email me. Uh, my email t t r i g g at o f y dot org. Okay. Well, with that being said, let's get into it. I'm going to present my screen for you guys. Okay. So this is what the activity looks like. First, we're going to go ahead and read this opening introduction here. So it says, Bruce retiled his kitchen. Originally, he bought three boxes of tile with the same number of tiles in each. In each box is what it means. He ran out of tile and had to go back to the store, get three extra boxes of tile. However, he only used two tiles from the last box to finish the job. Okay, so to recap, he bought three boxes, ran out of tile, bought three more boxes, and, and so he used up five boxes, and then the last box, the sixth box, he only used two of the tiles out of it. Felicia also retiled her kitchen. She bought five boxes of tile, and each box contained the same number of tiles as each of Bruce's boxes. She also ran out of tile. She had to go back to the store and get five more tiles to finish the job. Okay, so in, in Felicia's case, she bought five boxes of tile and ran out, so she had to buy five more extra tiles, not boxes, just five more separate tiles. In this activity, you'll determine whether Bruce and Felicia use the same number of tiles and whose tiles cover the most area per tile. Okay, I hope that made sense. Uh, let's go on uh, to page five here. So write an expression for the number of tiles Bruce used and an expression for the number of tiles Felicia used. Let X represent the number of tiles in a box. So if you recall, Bruce, Bruce bought six boxes. Um, and in his case, he only used five of the boxes. So he used five total boxes. And 5x is what we're going to put because it's five times however many tiles are in the box. So he only used five full boxes. Plus, he used two extra tiles. So from the sixth, um, from the sixth box, he only used two of those extra tiles. So five full boxes of tiles plus two extra. So this is, I guess we should probably put that this is Bruce. Now for Felicia, she used five full boxes as well, so 5x for her. And if you recall, she had to get five extra tiles to supplement and finish her project. All right, so here are the two expressions. You can see Bruce used five boxes plus two extra tiles. Felicia used five boxes plus five extra tiles. Okay. Is it possible for Bruce and Felicia to have the same, to have used the same number of tiles? Use complete sentences to explain your reasoning. Well, in order for them to have used the same number of tiles, that means these two expressions can equal each other. Well, let's just try that. Let's try to put these two expressions equal to each other. So five X, plus two, that's Bruce's, and then five X plus five for Felicia. So is it possible that this could be true? Is it possible that these could be equal? Well, what we can do to solve, we can check is, well, if I wanted to solve this equation, I'm gonna go ahead and write it over here on my scratch pad here. So five X plus two, and I want to see, does this, can this equal, I'm going to put a question mark, so can this equal, 
uh, 5x plus 5. Well, normally, when we're trying to solve an equation and figure out what x is, we want all our x's on the same side of the equation. So that's what we're going to do. So see how there's x's on both sides? There's 5x on the left and 5x on the right. So we want to make it so there's only x's on one side. So we're going to subtract these 5x's here to get rid of the x's on the side. And if we subtract 5x here, we have to subtract 5x on the other side. And that cancels as well. So what you're left with is 2 equals 5. Well, does 2 equal 5? Well, no. 2 does not equal 5. So is it possible to use the same number of tiles? No. So then we would say here, um, and maybe you could use this equation editor here. I think this would be useful. We could do 2, and we'll do the not equal 5. That's not equals right here. And there you go. So we could say, therefore, um, we know that Bruce and Alicia did not use the same number of tiles. Uh, feel free to put that slightly in your own words. Um, as with all the answers, feel free to put them in your own words. Um, I always appreciate that. Can't think of a way to put in your own words. You could just copy mine word for word if you really have to. All right. Okay. <clears throat> so suppose instead that Bruce used six full boxes of tiles plus an additional two tiles and Felicia used five full boxes of tiles plus an additional 17 tiles. Okay. If they each use the same number of tiles, how many tiles were in each box? So let's go ahead and write what this equation looks like. So in the case of Bruce, six full boxes plus two. So six full boxes plus two additional tiles. And in Felicia's case, she used five full boxes and an additional 17 tiles. Okay, so that would look like this, 5x plus 17 additional. All right, now like before, we want to uh, solve for x and that'll tell us how many tiles are in each box. So what we're gonna go ahead and do, we're gonna move all the x's over onto the left side. So these six x's, they're fine over here. We want them over here. But these five x's, see how they're on the right side? We don't want that. So we're gonna go and subtract the five x here. And that means we have to subtract five x on the other side for balance. Six x's minus five x's leaves you with a single x. We have a plus two here on the left side. On the right side, we still have a 17. Now to get x by itself, we go ahead and subtract two both sides. So that x equals 15. Now what does that tell me? That tells me the number of tiles that are in each box. So if, if this equals this, if 6x plus 2 equals 5x plus 17, that forces x to equal 15, which tells me the number of tiles in each box. So this were true, suppose instead this were true, then there'd be, have to be 15 tiles per box. Okay, next page. To the top. Okay, so the tiles that Bruce used were each one fourth of a square foot in area. The table shows the area covered by Felicia's tiles in terms of the number of tiles used. Okay, so in the case of Bruce, he each tile covers one fourth of a square foot. Um, in the case of Felicia's, though, notice she needs six tiles to cover a square foot. So that means that each of her tiles are one sixth of a square foot. Because it takes six of them for one square foot, 12 of them for two square feet, so on. 
Bruce and Felicia want to know whose tiles cover the most area per tile. All right, write an equation representing the area Bruce covers y in terms of the number of tiles he used x. So from here, we know for Bruce, it's one fourth of a square foot. So the amount of area he covers, we're going to go and use this fraction tool. And one fourth is what we were looking for. So each of his tiles cover one fourth. Oop, I don't want that X there. Let me do the arrow key. One fourth X. So the area each tile covers is one fourth of a square foot times however many tiles he has. For Felicia's case, um, each, of, each of her tiles covers one-sixth, okay? One-sixth. So for her, we're going to have one-sixth. Easy as that. Now, let's see, do you guys remember how to graph these? So for Bruce and Felicia, graph a line to represent y, the number each person covers using x tiles. <clears throat> so if you remember from looking at Bruce's equation here, y equals 1 fourth x, do you remember what this 1 fourth represents in a, in a linear equation? Well. The one fourth or whatever numbers in front of the X represents the slope of the line. So in our case, or in Bruce's case, the slope is one fourth. And if you recall, when it comes to slope, it's the rise over run, rise over run. So in Bruce's case, let's go ahead and write an equation for him. So we're gonna, I'm gonna select the point tool and we're gonna start right here at zero, zero. And since his slope is one fourth, that's a rise of one and a run of four. So rise one, run four. One, two. Oh. This is counting by twos, you can see that on the bottom. So I rise one and then I go over four. And you can see that's the line. And then it continues on in that way. So in the case of Bruce, this will be the line that's created. So now we're gonna go and use the line tool Click on the graph and drag the line. So go like that. And there you go. So in the case of Bruce, here's his linear equation. Now, see if you can make a linear equation for Felicia. So for Felicia, it's y equals one sixth x. Okay, so in her case, the slope is one sixth. So again, you'll start at zero, zero. And, but in Felicia's case, you'll go up one over six. So see if you can create the line for Felicia's. So I already created one, this one for Bruce. See if you can create another line for Felicia. Okay. Whose tiles cover more area per tile? Use complete sentences to explain your reasoning. Well, we already kind of know that Bruce's cover one fourth of a square foot, while Felicia's only cover one sixth of a square foot. So Bruce's tiles each cover an area of one fourth of a square foot. Al Felicia's tiles each cover area of one sixth of a square foot. So whose tiles cover more area? Well, which number is bigger? One fourth or one sixth? Well, one fourth is bigger, right? You can imagine a, a pizza cut into four slices versus a pizza cut into six slices. So the pizza cut into four slices, each slice is bigger. So yes, one fourth is bigger than one sixth. So, um, therefore,
um, Bruce's tiles for a larger area. Um, <clears throat> yeah, that's it. Cool. And that's the end of the activity. All right. Well, I hope that made sense. Um, if you're still struggling with this, it didn't really make sense to you. Um, feel free to send me an email. Again, my email is t t r i g g at o f y dot org. So that's ttrig at ofy.org. Okay. Well, uh, with that being said, I will see you guys next time with the unit four activity.